TOGAF 9 covers the development of four architecture domains. These are commonly accepted as subsets of an overall enterprise architecture, all of which TOGAF is designed to support. They are as follows. The business or process architecture defines the business strategy, governance, organization, and key business processes. The data architecture describes the structure of an organization's logical and physical data assets and data management resources. The application architecture is a blueprint for the individual application systems to be deployed, their interactions and relationships to core business processes. The technology architecture describes the software infrastructure intended to support deployment of core mission-critical applications. The purpose of an enterprise architecture is to optimize across the enterprise the often fragmented legacy of processes, both manual and automated, into an integrated environment that is responsive to change and supportive of the delivery of the business strategy. Effective management and exploitation of information through IT is a key factor to business success and an indispensable means to achieving competitive advantage. An enterprise architecture addresses this need by providing a strategic context for the evolution of the IT system in response to the constantly changing needs of the business environment. There are two key reasons why you need an enterprise architecture. An effective enterprise architecture is critical to business survival and success and is the indispensable means to achieving competitive advantage through IT. Today's CEOs know that the effective management and exploitation of information through IT is key to business success. An enterprise architecture addresses this need by providing strategic context for the evolution of the IT system in response to the constantly changing needs of the business environment. 2. An enterprise architecture enables you to achieve the right balance between IT efficiency and business innovation. It enables managed innovation within the enterprise. Individual business units can innovate safely in their pursuit of competitive advantage. At the same time, the needs of the organization for an integrated IT strategy are assured, permitting the closest possible synergy across the extended enterprise. There are a number of laws and regulations that have been drivers for the adoption and use of enterprise architecture in business such as the Klinger Cohn Act, also known as the U.S. Information Technology Management Reform Act of 1996. It was designed to improve the way the U.S. federal government acquires and manages information technology. It mandates the use of a formal enterprise architecture process for all U.S. federal agencies. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act was passed in response to a number of major corporate and accounting scandals involving prominent companies in the United States. Under the Act, companies must provide a testation of internal control assessment, including documentation of control processes related to information technology. Similarly, with the European Union, there are EU directives that require vendors involved in public contracts to show that they are using formal enterprise architecture processes within their businesses when supplying products and services. The specific benefits of enterprise architecture can be categorized into two key groups, business benefits to which enterprise architecture contributes and IT benefits to which enterprise architecture contributes. This slide looks at the business benefits. The next slide will look at the IT benefits. An enterprise architecture helps a business achieve its business strategy. Without an understanding of the business, information, and technical architectures, a business does not know what it has or has not. Enterprise architecture helps with faster time to market for new innovations and capabilities. If IT can introduce new technologies and functions quicker, then the organization can respond faster to competitive pressures. This means technology is ready when needed, transitions are smoother, and unnecessary change is kept to a minimum. Enterprise architecture also provides for more consistent business processes and information across business units. Enterprise architecture can unlock the power of information, unifying solos 
that inhibited business processes. It's a way to identify the processes, applications, and data that need to be consistent if consistent decisions are to be made. This means opportunities for integration and reuse are identified that prevents the development of inconsistent processes and information. Enterprise architecture enables more reliability and security and less risk. It provides clear traceability between business processes, data, user roles, applications, and infrastructure. This means a reliable architecture model aids consistency and manageability. The advantages that result from a good enterprise architecture can bring important business benefits as well, including a more efficient business operation with lower business operation costs, more agile organization, business capabilities that are shared across the organization, lower change management costs, more flexibility in the workforce, and improved business productivity. A good enterprise architecture can also enable a more efficient IT operation and lower software and development, support and maintenance costs, increase portability of applications, improve operability in system and network management, improve the ability to address critical enterprise-wide issues such as security risks, facilitate easier upgrade and exchange of system components. An enterprise architecture can enable better return on investment and reduced risk for future investment. It can reduce complexity in the business and IT environments. It can maximize return on investment in existing business and IT infrastructure. It can enable the flexibility to make, buy, or outsource business and IT solutions. It can reduce overall risk in new investments and their total cost of ownership. An enterprise architecture can facilitate faster, simpler, and cheaper procurement. An enterprise architecture can simplify buying decisions because the information governing procurement is already available in a coherent plan. It can make for a faster procurement process, maximizing procurement speed and flexibility without sacrificing architectural coherence. It can also enable the ability to procure heterogeneous multi-vendor open systems and enable the ability to secure more economic capabilities. An enterprise architecture is only as good as the decision-making framework that is established around it, the governance framework. The governance framework depends on clear authority structure and the right participants. The ADM, whether adapted by the organization or used as documented in TOGAF, is a key process to be managed and governed. The architecture board should be satisfied that the method is being applied correctly across all phases of an architecture development iteration. Compliance with the ADM is fundamental to the governance of the architecture to ensure that all considerations are being made and all required deliverables are produced. Governance is the way in which decisions are made with documented roles for who is responsible, who is involved, and who is accountable. It is essentially about ensuring that business is conducted properly. It is less about the overt control and strict adherence to rules and more about effective usage of resources to ensure sustainability of an organization's strategic objectives. An architecture framework is a foundation structure or set of structures that can be used for developing a broad range of different architectures. It should describe a method for designing a target state of the enterprise in terms of a set of building blocks. It should be used for showing how the building blocks fit together. It should also contain a set of tools and provide a common vocabulary and include a list of recommended standards and compliant products that can be used to implement the building blocks. TOGAF has been developed through the collaborative efforts of more than 300 architecture forum member companies from some of the world's leading companies and organizations. Using TOGAF results in enterprise architecture that is consistent, reflects the needs of stakeholders, employs best practices, and gives due consideration to both current requirements and to the perceived future needs of the business. Developing and sustaining an enterprise architecture is a technically complex process which involves many stakeholders and decision processes in the organization. 
TOGAF plays an important role in standardizing the risk reduction of the architecture development process. TOGAF provides a best practice framework for adding value and enables the organization to build workable economic solutions which address their business issues and needs. Why do I need a framework for enterprise architecture? Using an architecture framework will speed up and simplify architecture development, ensure more complex coverage of the design solution, and make certain that the architecture selected allows for future growth in response to the needs of the business. Architecture design is a technically complex process, and the design of heterogeneous, multi-vendor architectures is particularly complex. TOGAF plays an important role in helping to demystify the architecture development process, enabling IT users to build genuinely open system-based solutions to their business needs. Here is a conceptual overview of the TOGAF ADM illustrating the iterative, cyclical nature of the process. This slide gives many of the reasons why TOGAF is suitable and widely chosen as an architecture framework. TOGAF emphasizes business goals as architecture drivers and provides a repository of best practice, including the TOGAF Architectural Development Method, or ADM, ADM Guidelines and Techniques, the TOGAF Architecture Content Framework, the Enterprise Continuum, the TOGAF Reference Models, and the TOGAF Capability Framework. The TOGAF ADM is an iterative approach to planning, designing, realizing, and governing the architecture. ADM guidelines and techniques are guidelines to adapt the ADM and techniques to support application of the ADM. The TOGAF architecture content framework is a detailed model of architectural work products. The enterprise continuum is a model for structuring a virtual repository and methods for classifying architecture and solution artifacts. The TOGAF Capability Framework is a structured definition of the organization's skills, roles, and responsibilities needed to establish and operate an enterprise architecture. These are the TOGAF 9 components. The Architecture Development Method is an iterative sequence of steps to develop an enterprise-wide architecture. The ADM Guidelines and Techniques, the Architecture Content Framework, the TOGAF reference models, the technical reference model, and the I3RM integrated information infrastructure reference model supporting boundaryless information flow. The enterprise continuum is a virtual repository of architecture assets. During application of the ADM, assets are created or drawn from existing assets used, modified, and returned to the virtual repository and the architecture capability framework. Here is a brief overview of the TOGAF 9.1 standard table of contents. Part 1 is the introduction, the preface, executive overview, core concepts, definitions, and release notes. Part 2 covers the architecture development method or ADM, which includes an introduction to the ADM and the ADM phase narratives. Part 3 is ADM Guidelines and Techniques. It includes guidelines for adapting the ADM process and techniques for architecture development. Part 4 covers the Architecture Content Framework, including the Architecture Content Meta Model, Architectural Artifacts, Architecture Deliverables, and Building Blocks. Part 5, the Enterprise Continuum and Tools, includes the Enterprise Continuum, the Architecture Partitioning, architecture repository, and tools for architecture development. Part 6, TOGAF reference models, includes foundation architecture, the technical reference model, and integrated information infrastructure reference model. Part 7, the architecture capability framework, includes the architecture board, architecture compliance, architecture contracts, architecture governance, architecture maturity models, and architecture skills framework. The architecture development method, or ADM, is an iterative sequence of steps used to develop an enterprise-wide architecture. The ADM guidelines and techniques 
are guidelines and techniques to support the application of the ADM. The Architecture Content Framework is a detailed model of the architectural work products, including the deliverables, artifacts within deliverables, and the architecture building blocks that deliverables represent. The Enterprise Continuum is a model for structuring a virtual repository and methods for classifying architecture and solution artifacts. The TOGAF reference models include the TOGAF Technical Reference Model, or TRM, and the Integrated Information Infrastructure Model. The Architecture Capability Framework is a structured definition of the organization's skills, roles, and responsibilities to establish and operate an enterprise architecture. The architecture capability operates a method. The method is supported by a number of guidelines and techniques and produces content to be stored in the repository. The content is classified according to the enterprise continuum, which is populated initially with the TOGAF reference models. The ADM is iterative and circular. The following slides give a brief high-level overview of each of the phases. Every phase of the ADM is validated against and validates the current requirements of the business. Requirements management is key and central to the process as indicated by being at the center of the cycle. The preliminary phase of the ADM includes the preparation and initiation activities to create an architecture capability. During the preliminary phase, an understanding of the business environment must be developed. There must be a high-level management commitment. There must be an agreement on scope. Architectural principles must be established. A structure of architecture governance must be established. And any customizations to TOGAF must be defined. Phase A, the architecture vision, initiates one iteration of the architecture process. It sets scope, constraints, and expectations. It is required at the start of every architecture cycle. It creates the architecture vision. It validates business context. It creates statement of architecture work. Phase B, business architecture. Phase B is about development of a business architecture to support an agreed architecture vision. Phase B examines the fundamental organization of a business embodied in its business processes and people, their relationships to each other and the environment, and the principles governing its design and evolution. It also shows how the organization can meet its business goals. The business architecture contains an organization structure, business goals and objectives, business functions, business services, business processes, business roles, and a correlation of organization and functions. This sequence of steps is common to phases B, C, and D. In the business architecture, phase B, the steps are select reference models, viewpoints, and tools, then define a baseline architecture description, define the target architecture description, and perform a gap analysis between the two, define candidate roadmap components, then conduct a formal stakeholder review and finalize the architecture. Finally, create an architecture definition document. Phase C is about documenting the information systems architectures for an architecture project. It examines the fundamental organization of an IT system embodied in the major types of information in the applications that process it, the relationships to each other in the environment, and the principles governing its design and evolution. It also shows how IT systems meet the principal business goals of the enterprise. There are two steps in the information systems architecture phase, development of the data architecture and development of the application architecture. A question arises as which to do first. TOGAF does not mandate any order, so it may be developed in either order or in parallel. Advocates exist for both approaches, but TOGAF leaves this to the user to decide. It is usually necessary to address both information system architectures and data architectures, but it's not always the case depending on the project's scope and constraints. Architectures may be developed in either order or in parallel. Theory suggests 
data architecture should come first. Practical considerations may mean that starting with an application architecture may be more efficient. In any case, there will need to be some iteration to ensure consistency. Phase D is the technology architecture. It addresses the fundamental organization of an IT system embodied in its hardware, software, and communications technology and their relationships to each other and the environment and the principles governing its design and evolution. Phase E is about initial implementation planning, generating an initial architecture roadmap and identifying whether an incremental approach is needed. Phase E also assesses priorities and identifies dependencies. Phase F finalizes the architecture roadmap and a detailed implementation and migration plan, items that were created in the previous Phase E. Phase F addresses work packages and projects identified in Phase E and performs cost-benefit analyses and risk assessment. Phase G implementation governance provides architectural oversight for the implementation. It defines architecture constraints on implementation projects. It governs and manages an architectural contract. It monitors implementation work for conformance and produces a business value realization. Phase H architecture change management provides continual monitoring and a change management process. It ensures that changes to the architecture are managed in a cohesive and architected way. It establishes and supports the enterprise architecture to provide flexibility to evolve rapidly in response to changes in the technology or business environment. It monitors the business and capacity management.